Today's edition of the podcast is brought to you by Coach Me Plus. Coach Me Plus is the leader in athlete management software and a product that I've been lucky enough to be using for a little over a year now. Only rivaled by the impeccable customer service that Kevin and his staff provides, Coach Me Plus's ability to constantly be amoeba like in their ability to mold and, and matriculate what you're trying to get across and bring together. Is, is absolutely fantastic. Their constant pursuit of better ways and better methods and, and innovations and progress to their own product is absolutely fantastic. Go over to CoachMePlus.com, check out what they got, guys. It's, uh, it's something that I guarantee you won't be disappointed with. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, we have an absolutely sensational talk with Wichita State's High Performance Director, Adam Ringler. And Adam's going to get into everything from how they started and built the program to what they're looking at. Uh, he gets into this octagon right here, which is an absolutely stellar uh, icon that they have put together to talk about what they do out there in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, if you can't see this right now because you're listening on iTunes or Podomatic or whatever podcast I'll let you use, hop over to YouTube or uh, I'm going to try to use it as the actual icon for the talk, too. It's really awesome. Um, you know, it, it takes into consideration everything that they're talking about. Adam talks about how they started to build it, what their key components are, what they look at as things that need to be built upon, and, and where they've been going. It's really an awesome talk, guys. Adam, Adam's doing great things out there. I can't thank him enough for taking the time to sit down and share with us today. I hope you enjoy this talk as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Adam, thanks for being on with us today, buddy. Hey, man. Thanks uh, Thanks so much. Uh, honored and humbled uh, to be invited on, man. I feel like it's been been uh, months or if not years in the making where we've just tried to uh, connect and never seemed to find a time to, uh, you know, uh, find a time online. So I'm glad that it worked out for us today. Yeah, totally. It, didn't, uh, it has been. It's been like legitimately like 12 months, hasn't it, that it's been yeah. trying to make this happen. So I'm, I'm really excited. And, I, and I'm really excited for the opportunity to share with people the things that you're doing out there at Wichita State. So, so first of all, let's talk about, you know, what it is you're doing and, and the program you're, you're building out there and go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think it's similar to many of the past people that you've had on. Um, as far as kind of what we've developed and what I've done since I got out here in 2010, uh, 2013 was a pretty big mark for us as far as really starting to sort of position the support staff um, from the auxiliary services that we offer to help provide a better sort of physical preparation for our student athletes. Um, as you and, and probably many other people can relate, you know, with where we're at at Wichita State, we won't have the multidisciplinary sort of practitioners that will provide the support that they might need from a nutritional aspect or from a technological aspect or a sports sci aspect. So as a practitioner, we really needed to kind of start to wear all of those hats. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was about 2012 where, you know, the first couple of years of just kind of banging our head against the wall, um, really trying to physically prepare our student athletes for, uh, for sport at essentially at this level, which I think is arguably probably the most challenging level of athletics just because of all the various resources that student athletes nowadays have access to. What we found ourselves is that we're just missing little performance leaks here. Um, and after that 2012 year for me, recognizing that while we're setting PRs and we're getting stronger and our athletes are getting better and physically they're more developed, that there's just little health style leaks that are uh, essentially setting them up for failure. So what we've tried to do since that, that 2013 year, really devise a program very similar to, you know, and, and I know it's a sort of a cliche at this point to say that it's a high performance program, but we wanted to really start to orchestrate and implement the support services that I think our athletes need to, to compete at this level. So everything from dietetics to nutrition education to providing them a, at least a psychological framework for them to, 
you know, enter their competitive uh, environment and arena already winning the competition in their minds uh, before it's manifested into their, the, their performance and their body. But to really start to say, look, if we are to wear these hats and, and really try to implement these services for our student athletes, then we need to make sure that we're understanding it. We're, we're reaching out across campus and, and talking to our professors and the educators that we already have access to uh, just from a geographical proximity to be able to say, hey, you guys are the experts. This is what you guys are doing. Let's sort of integrate you into our athletic department visa, visa V through our program so you can provide that context to our student athletes. And I think that's, you know, while I would love to have it all completely under one roof, you know, that's the idea of where we're, we're going and we're bridging to, to develop this staff to say, hey, yeah, absolutely. We already have an ATC physio medical model, but what are we doing from a technological model? What are we doing from a recovery, from a health style, from a, the physical aspects of the psychological aspects and trying to kind of compile and, and orchestrate this program to provide those services to our student athletes. Well, and I see the octagon is behind you over your left shoulder, which is an absolutely amazing uh, graphic that you've put together. So let's dive into how you built that and how each one of those sides fits in with what you're doing down there with the Shockers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think everything, you know, it, if you don't follow through on it, it's not worth the piece of paper that it's printed on. Um, so, you know, everywhere in this facility with my staff, with the people I talk to, I, I need them to understand what the overarching principle and, and vision is of our program. And, and that model was one that, again, adopted and sort of adapted to our situation, our environment that we're in. But uh, like most SNC coaches, myself as well, you know, like we can we can really develop our student athletes to try to match the biomotor demands of what their sport are to exceed it. But there's just all these energy leaks or performance leaks if we're not addressing that. And that was essentially in 2012. That's what I, I came across. I was isolated and probably siloed as a practitioner into really diving down this physical domain. And I think because we didn't have necessarily the, the sort of exposure to all the various other multi-disciplines that it takes to be successful, that we just saw that, yeah, while they're sitting PRs in the weight room and they're running better and they're stronger, we're missing out on some of these, some of these other sort of disciplines. So what we created was just a visual for us to start to build the skeletal system and then to start to find components that fits within these, this model. Um, whether it's in-house already in our athletic department or if it's across campus or if it's through consultations, you know, internationally or across the nation to try to say, OK, what are we doing technically, tactically that we can do better? How can we influence and help our coaching staff make the right decisions at the right time? So, um, you know, as a SNC practitioner, as a performance practitioner, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of times that marriage is separated or divorced at best. And we're really trying to bridge that gap from that technical aspect to the performance aspects, because we do have the opportunity of seeing and influencing so much of what the performance capabilities are of our student athletes. So, you know, are there things that we can be doing differently in the practice plan? Can we change and help influence that coach's education so that you know, our coaches are positioning and creating, again, from a physiological standpoint, that it's in the best student athletes' best interest to, uh, to go down a, a practice plan in a particular order. Are there things strategically throughout the micro cycle? Can we do things differently week to week so that we're setting ourselves up or setting the athletes up for the best likelihood of success when they go out Friday night or Saturday night to perform? So, um, you know, that's one small piece that we do is try to help educate our sport coaches. And I think that's uh, in, in the best interest of all, all sort of uh, athletic department members and, and staff. But I, I think the, the biggest and the, the, the easiest thing to think that we have the most influence over is obviously the physical domain because, uh, you know, that's what we are. That's what we cut our teeth on as uh, strength and conditioning coaches. So, um, you know, ultimately, if we're not 
fulfilling that discipline, then we probably have no other route to, or no other reason to start going and searching for these marginal gains elsewhere. But if you're already doing that and you're doing it really well, then what you'll probably find similar to what I found was that we just had these performance leaks. Um, you know, whether it's choking under pressure, if it's athletes staying up late, if it's athletes mismanaging stressors throughout their day from academic to social to performance stressors, if from a medical standpoint, if we're not bridging the gap from a return to competition standpoint, are we having little lags or, or moments where we're not a cohesive team from a medical, from an ATC, from a physio to a practitioner standpoint, we're losing out on opportunities of really setting our athletes up for success. And if we're not, lastly, as we work our way around this sort of model, if we're not doing, you know, at least educating our student athletes how to take care of their bodies, how to, to perform the basic self-maintenance that our student athletes need to do and outsource that responsibility to them, um, essentially uh, maybe metaphorically giving them the wrench to understand how to take care of their own engine, uh, then I think we're setting themselves up for long-term failure if they do decide, hey, you know what, I I'm going to go across seas and I'm going to play international ball or I want to play professional um, volleyball in Europe or I want to go on and try to make it to the league or wherever the professional environment might be, whether it's Olympics or Paralympics. Um, if they don't understand how to navigate this multidisciplinary sort of approach to modern athletics, I think ultimately they'll find themselves, again, maybe like myself, you know, banging their head up against a wall, being a master of one discipline, but understanding that all those performance gains potentially could be leaking out uh, in a number of other sort of disciplines. So looking at the whole model based on the octagon, what we're really looking at is just more or less an educational system. So how do you go about taking a kid who, if this all started in 2012, now you're looking at people who are on the back end of it four years in, who have been the realistic guinea pigs, you know, yeah. of the program. So how has that education, A, evolved, and B, like, how do you see that when you're progressing as you're dealing with these freshman kids now versus the ones that were in 2012? Yeah, so... I think like anything, you know, it, it, it takes a tremendous amount of work to get the flywheel spinning. And then as the wheel is continuing to spin, you can leverage the momentum that you have from your upperclassmen to help reinforce the education of the underclassmen. Um, and I think that's just that's paying it forward and trying to leave a little bit of a legacy of saying, hey, yeah, I've gone through this experience and this is what I've learned. And I'm going to take some ownership of the team. And I want to make sure that I, I keep my footprint uh, yeah, or my identity still within the team so that as I leave and I go on, that the lessons that I've learned via through our coaching staff continues to ring through for, you know, classes upon classes. So our curriculum for whether it's nutritional education, if it's lifestyle or health style, if it's recovery, um, all of this kind of, again, it starts very much like a progression that we would take in the weight room where we're trying to take an athlete from crawling to walking and walking to running. So we're really going to tailor that educational experience to our freshmen or underclassmen a little bit differently. So again, the challenges that they might face that freshman, sophomore year is going to be a different challenge than the, the performance pressure that they're going to face when, hey, I'm a fourth or fifth year senior it's on the line. It's up to me. I have a different leadership responsibility, but also I have different life stressors that, that other athletes don't have to worry about. You're worrying about intro to, you know, mathematics 101. I'm thinking about it's the end of my athletic career, essentially, unless I have aspirations to go on. Uh, oh, and by the way, I, I need to start applying for jobs. I need to start looking. I need to get my resume in order. I need to get all the life, life, lifestyle skills to, to be able to continue on in a very uh, successful manner after my career. So again, the stressors are going to be differently. The environment's going to be different from living in a dorm to living off campus and the responsibility of grocery shopping versus navigating the dorm cafeterias is differently. So 
I think that like everything else, right, we need to really try to simplify what our approach is and then tailor that to the individual or to the class. And that's that's been the, the progression that we've taken from an educational standpoint is just recognizing that, look, if you're not, you know, uh, at least being proficient in addition and subtraction, we have no manner, we have no right to take you up to calc and trig and and uh, advanced statistics, right? In the same aspects, if you're eating, you know, fruity pebbles every day uh, for breakfast, then I don't need to start going into, okay, what's the macronutrient breakdown of your foods? Or, you know, are, are we eating X, Y, or Z? So it's really starting to say, look, regardless of where you're at on this continuum, and we have athletes that, that enter, you know, with a very sort of physical skill set, just because I think that, you know, what we're starting to see is that over the last sort of four or five year recruiting classes that we have been, I mean, most of the athletes have had more exposure to strength conditioning. So credit our field and profession, high school strength and conditioning coaches um, and the influence that they're making, because I think they're making our jobs easier now. Uh, but we also have athletes that have never grocery shopped with mom or dad or have never sat quietly without a cell phone in a hand and and actively tried to meditate or actively tried to uh you know stop whatever thoughts that are running through their heads uh so there's just a lot of different sort of potential of of individualization and i wish there was a a wand i could say hey this is what we've done a b or c but it's it, every year i found that as we go through this there's minor tweaks and changes that you need to make right like it's not just, hey, it's it's back squats, front squats, three by X reps that we're hitting today. Like, oh, hey, coach, you know, my, my quad hurts, my hamstring hurts, or, hey, I, I, you know, like I, I tweaked this at practice yesterday. And that's the, the aspect that I think practitioners, we need to understand that, yeah, it's great to have a script and to have a plan wrote down for everything that we do. But like we all know, you know, like, oh, hey, practice is running late. We're, the team's going to be 30 minutes behind. Uh, okay, uh, I'll modify my uh, I'll modify my script, and and that's the approach that we've needed to take uh, almost every year since 2013. No, that's pretty fantastic, man. That's that's actually like a lot of awesome stuff. But thinking about the whole idea that you know you need to have the script to make the alterations, what's the next act? So where is this going? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing that that we're reaching out to do is understand that. You know, with any sort of service, I think if you can find what the choke points are in it and you try to alleviate those choke points or those bottlenecks, that the services can start to become a little bit more automated. Right. I think that's that's the essence of it. Like, how can we do our job and do it at a very high level, but remove some of the stressors that is, OK, all this information, be it flowing through one or two or three or four people. How can we make it a little bit more flat and how can we make these services more accessible to student athletes? So the challenges and the the next step for us uh, is really starting to grow our internship program to recruit uh, and to hire and to bring in this multidisciplinary practitioner. So, you know, I think classically, you know, we've we've been adverse to saying, hey, you know, we're strength conditioning coaches. We only are interested in training strength conditioning coaches or people that want to continue on. But I think when we're doing that, we're also saying, hey, we have no value. If you're a nutritional student or you're a dietetic student, you have no value to us. Um, and I think that's that's a flawed approach. I think we can say, hey, you know what? You might not be interested in the X's, the X's and O's of what we do from a weight room programming standpoint. But this might be a very good practicum for you to gain some experience navigating and talking with student athletes about nutrition. Um, so that's uh, that's an aspect where, you know, we've accepted our first dietetic student coming in to do an internship here in the spring. But as you sort of extrapolate that out, like, hey, what about your business majors? What about your your statisticians or your analytics students that are over in the math wing that would love to run some R for you? Um, or do a little bit more correlations or advanced statistics with you and maybe have a third party audit of of what your program is is about. So 
you know, like as we walk around sometimes with the bravado, like, yeah, our athletes are getting stronger. They're getting better. You know, we're reducing the chances or the you know chances of injuries or the, the severity of injuries. But are we, you know, like, have you, have you had that third party audit and are there sort of blind spots that as we have our cognitive biases about being married or being so close to our program that can you objectively evaluate and critically evaluate the program success? So, you know, inviting these sort of uh, interns into the program or massage therapists or, you know, if you have somebody that's very sort of technologically savvy saying, hey, you know what, you're going to be our, our sort of sport sport science, sport tech intern into our program so that we're starting to shift what the sort of expectations of our internship program away from saying, hey, you know what, this is just a, a uh, strength conditioning internship to sort of saying, hey, you're going to learn how to be, be a performance manager during this internship. And you need to be savvy. You might not know everything in deep detail that you know, the bioengineering department professors would know about force plates or motion capture sensors, but you need to have the vernacular. You need to have the ability to talk and have a deep conversation with one practitioner and then look over and say, yeah, I can speak physio. I can speak doctor. I can speak athletic trainer. I can speak sports side and be able to integrate all the various disciplines into saying, okay, now I have this acumen, I have this knowledge. What does it mean to you, sport coach, when you're devising a practice plan? And I think that is the challenge that we're in. And, and as we're continuing to craft the narrative and the language and, and to hone and really find what's more precise and what matters between big data and, and really start to strip out and saying like, hey, what really matters to a sport coach? And, uh, and ultimately, I think, all of that will will be dictated by what the sport coach wants. And I think as, as a support staff, we need to be able to constantly, constantly ask that question of them of saying, what's relevant to you, to you, what's relevant to your program and how can we continue to de deliver those results to your program? And then on the forefront, think about, okay, what are the questions that you're not even asking yet? And how can I start to provide those answers? So when you do ask them, we have them already for you. So kind of predicting where they're going to want to go next based on where they want to go now. Yeah, yeah, you bet. <clears throat> That's pretty awesome. And the whole internship program, it, I think, is a great idea. We're, we're actually looking at some things like that here to, to try to assist us in some of these other realms because, like you said, man, it, it's a lot to do when you're flying solo. Yeah. And I think that's the challenge, you know, like when you, when you go across a country and it's, you know, like, and you're sitting down and you're like, oh, wow, you have X, Y, or Z, uh, and they're full time and they're there every single day and that's all they do. And, you know, like you start to realize like, man, I mean, you know, like how, how do I get those services out here in Wichita, Kansas or, or out wherever you might be, you know, like, a D2, D3, mid-major, high blue blood, doesn't matter. Like, you know, like regardless of where you're at, like how can you take what are the, what I think is right now, the best practices of our industry to help prepare modern athletes for the challenges of today, which is different, um, and say, okay, how do I do that when I might not have the resources to be able to do that? Right. And where can I draw upon to get resources, you know, but at the same time, still providing a quality education for the interns and an experience where they walk away from it three, six, nine, 12 months later and saying, I'm a better man or woman because I, I came here and I learned all the various aspects. And I thought performance nutrition was this, but really it's so much more than just that. And I think as you navigate that octagon, that regardless if you come in and you're saying, hey, I'm the sports side intern or I'm the, you know, nutritional intern, I'm the massage therapist intern, I'm the whatever it is that you're going to gain a greater appreciation of how much we all need each other, how much it truly is more integrated these days. And that it's not just a, Hey, I'm a hammer and everything, the world's my nail, that it's a little bit more great than what we think. And I think having that exposure to it 
is a tremendous opportunity for young coaches, young practitioners, young interns to understand what it takes to to be a practitioner and to run a program uh, at the level of you know like of the programs of the best. No, no doubt about it. So now you're four years in. If yeah. we could give you a DeLorean and enough room to hit 88 miles an hour, and you could go back to 2012 or 2013 or 2015, whatever it may be, and change things, what would you do? So I would, that's a great question. I would say, look, uh, if I was having a conversation with myself, is that uh, don't try to do it alone, number one, right? You yes. have, and I think that's a, that's a young, that's a, a naive approach of maybe, again, going in it and you're, 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 you're uh, enthusiastic about it and you're, tr you know, you're blazing this pathway, but uh, don't do it alone. Like literally uh, a three minute walk down to our human performance laboratory and I can talk to, to you know, exercise physiologists that's been in the field for 20 years and, and understand, and again, and, or to walk another four minutes across campus and go to our buyer engineering department and talk to a, a wealth of information that have already solved a lot of the challenges and problems I'm thinking. I'm like, how can this, you know, how can I ar articulate this to the student athletes and, you know, like this environment different? And they're like, no, 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 it's not. It's really not that different. You just, you're looking at it from the wrong end. If you flip it around, it's, it's, you know, it's much more similar than what you think. So my advice with anybody is, you know, reach a crowd, reach across campus or, or look at the resources you already have or around in close proximity of your university, of your college, of your, your high school and say, what's already here. And then pick up the phone or have a coffee or have a pint with one of these guys and, or gals or whomever and uh and learn from them like have the have the ego and the humility to to buy a cup of coffee and then shut up and and just listen and let them talk <laughs> no doubt that's i think that's one of the most overlooked aspects of it is, is that you get in and all of a sudden it's like you need you need a freaking life vest because it's there's so much going on and, and you're drowning in it. And then all of a sudden it's, it, you reach out when it's a necessity as opposed to when it could have been the priority to build the whole thing around what these people look at you asking questions like, Oh yeah, that's easy. Yeah. But you've been banging your head into, you know, into a mirror, turning it into sand for the last three months and you don't know what's going on, you know? Yeah, I, I, I can, I can relate to that. And I think it's, it, it's just dual fold in that it, it, it helps other departments out. It helps the person, uh, that you're reaching out to. And then it ultimately helps you and which, which in turn helps the student athlete. And I think it's win win when you can invite other people in. And, uh, I think as a, as a whole, that we've had such a uh, protective sort of siloed aspects of our profession, uh, which is probably similar to every other profession. Mm -hmm. But I think once we have that transparency and we open up the veil or, or peek behind the veil and we bring people in, that it, it only makes us better as practitioners, as coaches, to independently look at what we do and, uh, and look at it with a different sort of set of glasses on and say, yep, we can do this better or we're doing, we're doing this really well, but this area of, uh, of uh, this discipline, we need to do better. And uh, I think it's win-win for everybody that uh, is involved. No doubt. And, and let's be honest, most people working at a college would really be happy to help out with athletics too. And that's, and that's the biggest thing too is that you know, I, as I came across and talked to these various individuals, people that's been on campus for, you know, 15, 20 years, they, they felt disenfranchised or they felt that they weren't asked to belong. So therefore that there was something against it, you know, and that mm -hmm. it's just never that the, 
that the invitation was ever sent. It's like the email that never goes out sitting in the, the outbox. And it's like, if you would have just pressed send or you just would have walked over and said, hey, I'm so-and-so and you know, I'd love to, to have a relationship with you and let's grab coffee and let's talk and just have a, a, a brown sack lunch and just kind of uh, rap about various things that we see in athletics and, and academics. We find that you know, we're, we're closer to similar than we are further apart. And that sometimes there's the invitation, you know, saying, yeah, I'm, in, I'm involved in the athletics program or I'm in the department or I, I, you know, I liaison between what we do academically to what they're doing athletically. I mean, that, that bolsters the athletic department's vision and program and, and integratedness. And it ultimately, I think it, it gives a great sense of pride to our academics as well of saying, yeah, I contributed to that championship. Like, where's my championship ring? Like I, I earned that trophy with them, you know, in a small cap capability, but like as ultimately as coaches, like that's, that's us too. Like we're like, we're this amount of the equation and it's the talents and the, the outputs that the athletes do. And that's, I just want to bring more people in to be like, yeah, we did this together. We did this, this championship as a team and not, you know, like, oh, well, that's our athletic department. No, oh, that is an absolutely stellar point. And I think that it's one that a lot of people are really overlooking in the fact that they think automatically people in academia just don't like the athletic department because whether it be the kids aren't as smart as the normal kids or they have a different agenda or whatever, if you can involve them, they'll love it and they'll want to be involved more and more people will, be, will want to be involved as well. So now all of a sudden, it is one huge group. Yeah. You know, rowing the same way. And, and in addition to that, I mean, if you, you reach out and you actively involve these professors or, or adjunct professors and whomever, they'll become the biggest advocates of your athletic department. And then when you're searching out for new interns or new help or new labor forces or really smart creatives to assist with your program, you have a liaison that's already in the department, almost from a talent ID standpoint, yeah. sending you their very best students to help assist because maybe they're too busy working on a, a grant or a research project. But you know what? Here's two of my best students that would love to facilitate and help out with your program. And then it becomes like a feeder program, like AAU or like whatever sort of high school development, like you're isolating, identifying academically who's the most talented. And then you're getting the cream of the crop to come in and help your department. And it's, it becomes a self-sustainable system that look, they're going to graduate. They're going to get jobs somewhere. And I hope it's high level professional jobs. But when they leave, I think a good sign of any sort of sport program or any sort of department is that it's the next man up or the next woman up. And we want to continue to help evolve this program and to get high caliber, smart creatives into it. So the, the liaison academically to athletically is a huge one. And they can become such a huge advocate for your department, for your vision. No, 100%. And I think that that's an awesome point to end it on because so many people, again, they just overlook how that relationship can be so vital in, in improving everything. Adam, this is killer, man. I really can't thank you enough for taking the time. It's it's awesome to get a little glimpse behind the curtain here to see what you're doing and what you're building. Keep fighting the good fight and doing your thing out there, man. You know, it's uh, it's really appreciated all the work you're doing. So thank you. Keep it up. Jay, yeah, man, I appreciate it. And, and hopefully you don't lose too many subscribers from uh, from this one. Uh, yeah. But but no, man, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for and having me on. I'm humbled and, again, uh, honored to contribute to uh, – what is otherwise our, our professional practice. So well, thanks, man. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks a bunch. And we'll, uh, we'll be in touch real soon, buddy. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, man. That's killer, dude. And a huge thanks today to Wichita State's Adam Ringler for taking the time to sit down and talk with us. Guys, I think that the two biggest take-homes are, one, just like everybody has said with all of these, education is key. You know, driving education, driving conversation. Can we help the athletes and the coaches learn more? But even more so, when we're teaching these student athletes, are they able to take it to their next position, whether it be able to, like he says, if we can give them the wrench to, to handle their own maintenance when it comes to whatever it may be when they're going to play abroad or if they're lucky enough to make one of the pro leagues here. 
And then I, I think that he really hit the nail on the head when he talked about how the, the biggest and most important thing is to make sure that your strength and conditioning program is as good as possible before we start worrying about this other stuff. Now, I'm sure that most of us listening to that are kind of like, well, oh, duh. But really, I think that that's just a huge point that in now today's day and age where we look at all these new neat toys or whatever we want to call them from questionnaires to monitoring tech to tracking player load, it, it seems as though we don't talk as much about training kids better. So I think that's a huge point and, and one that I'm really happy that Adam pointed out. And guys, if you did enjoy the talk as much as I did, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice. Adam's doing awesome things out there, and I can't thank him enough for sharing everything and being so candid with us today. Uh, and if you guys took something from it, please tweet it, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it may be. Again, we're just trying to get great information out to all the coaches out there. And thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for being part of what we do here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.